Hey guys, Mr. Bill here again, and today I'm just going to go through how I slice my stuff up to play it in live view. So um, I'm just going to assume already that you know how to get your stuff into uh, stems. Basically this is just bouncing groups of tracks down into single files. So for instance I've got all my percussion in, in one file, like all the hi-hats, the snares, the toms, uh, whatever in the percussion channel. I've got my kicks on one channel, I've got all my bass in one channel all my synths in one channel and then I've got this uh, channel called Other and that's um, <clears throat> where I've done stuff like Bounce the Master channel and all my sends, like my, um, my return tracks have been bounced into this and um, yeah, pretty much I've just got five files here, kick, bass, percussion, synth stuff and other stuff and <clears throat> pretty much now what I do is I, I slice it all up into patterns and, and yeah, this is how I go about playing live. So. Um, to start off, I just have to make the tempo 160 so it matches the tune. I'm going to be slicing up the uh, fifth track off my new EP, Suave. It's called Spatula. And um, so yeah, basically I'll just start with this percussion loop because that's kind of one of the first things you hear. So I'll just solo it and we'll listen to it. So that's pretty much the whole loop just there. And that happens all the way up till here. So as soon as we've sorted out this section here, we've pretty much done half the tune regarding percussion or a quarter of the tune. Here it changes a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom into this section here and we'll just deal with this section first. So I'll just loop that. So that's the same thing. So it's just a two bar loop. So I'll just loop that. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut this up into little pieces. So I'll just click over here on the three bar mark and press Command D and that'll just make this one file now. And then I'll decide where I want to chop it from here. So I'll just chop it there, there and there. So now I've got the percussion loop in four parts. So I can play this in a, diff a few different ways now. And then what I'll do is I'll press uh, Command J on all of those files and what that'll do is it'll change it from being one big file here with a start and an end point to just being one single file like this. <clears throat> and the reason I do that is so we can select all those files then and press loop. And that means when we put it in session view later and we play it all, it'll just continue to play around and around until we stop it. So that's pretty much the first thing we have to deal with. Um, Oops, I'll just get rid of that locator. Um, we can pretty much get rid of all of this because that's just all silence. We can get rid of all that. That's just silence. We can get rid of that. Um, pretty much anywhere where there's just silence, we can we can just get rid of that stuff because we don't need it. We're not using it. So I'll just get rid of all of this. So that's a basic cleanup of all the silence. I'll have to go in and clean it up as we go. So we've got the percussion sorted for a while. Uh, so I'll just get rid of everything up until it changes, which is up around. So that one has a different snare on some of the beats, so I don't really have to take the whole thing. I just have to take the new snare hit there. So I'll just take that first bit <clears throat> and we'll go put that with the rest of our percussion over here somewhere. Just. <clears throat> so we can see here this one has a bigger snare on this beat than this one over here. So I'll just Command J that, consolidate it and loop that as well. <clears throat> so that pretty much covers everything in that section, except for this. No, I'll just forget about that, I probably won't want to deal with that live, so what's here? So we've got a bit of a new beat happening here, so same deal, I'll just cut it up into on beats and off beats. So. I'll cut that up like that into little half bar loops and then I'll just command J all of that stuff for consolidation and then loop it all and then 
I'll cut all this and we'll paste it over with our other percussion again. <clears throat> so you see what we're doing here? We're just building up a bunch of loops so that when we put it into session view we've got a lot of stuff to choose from. So that pretty much covers all of that stuff. We've got a, enough stuff to screw around with. So we've got a couple of new things here. I'll just slice that up. I'll just get rid of that. We'll Command J both of these. Whoops. Command J. And I'll just loop that. And we'll just cut these. We'll move them over with our percussion as well. So we've got big group of percussion stuff over there. Uh, we'll move on to all this section after we've finished with everything on this side because this actually goes into a tempo change. So that's way too quick for what we want. It's actually supposed to be at 1.30. So what I'll do is I'll just deal with everything over here first. <clears throat> so um, in the kick track there's not too much we have to be concerned with. There's a kick happening every now and then so I'll just slice out one of those and um, I will consolidate it just so it's a smaller file but I won't actually loop it because I want to be able to trigger that whenever I feel like it so we'll put that over there and then the only other thing we have to deal with here is the kick here which has got re reverb on it so I'll just cut that to the end of the tail of the reverb which is around here somewhere so I'll just Cut that, or Command J, and then I'll just cut that out and paste it over near the other stuff we've got happening, and delete everything there. And then we go get all the bass lines. I think there's only about three that we have to be concerned with. So here's the first one. So yeah, it's pretty much just this that we have to be uh, concerned with. So I'll just cut that, loop it, and chuck this over here. Uh, there's a few different variations of it where it cuts off a bit short, but I won't worry about that. And that pretty much deals with all of that stuff. And then we've got another one here, which is just pure sign. So that's pretty much that loop there. So we'll just cut that. And we'll move it over near our other base stuff. Get rid of that. And what's this? Dubstep base, we need that. Paste that over there. So now I'll get the synths. So there's a melody. We'll cut that. We'll actually loop that so we can do stuff with it. Just a couple of beeps I'll put over there as well. <clears throat> we can get rid of that stuff. We've already got one of those. So here's our next melody. So that's pretty much it, just there. Consolidate that, loop it, and put it in melody land over here. It's just a bunch of orchestral stuff, so we'll cut that, loop it, move it over here. Same stuff. It's got a beep in it, I don't really care. So 
So we'll take that. It's like another variation of the same thing. Loop it. Move it over here. Just get rid of all of that, actually. Yeah, we need the harpsichord. So join that, loop it, and move it over here. So there's all our melody stuff, and then we've just got the other stuff to deal with now, which is just effects and such. So that's just like reverb and stuff that belongs to be on top of this first synth. So I'll cut that, join it, loop it. And the cool thing about having your effects separate to your synths is that you can uh, you can just play the effects whenever you want. You don't have to play them where they're supposed to belong in the tracks. So you can just have the reverb sound and it's almost another way of using a... It's kind of like you have your effect but in a clip. some more nice reverby stuff there that belongs on top of other stuff. That's melody effects, we'll take that as well. Um, what else do we have here? Probably don't care about that too much. I do like that glitch, so I'll take that, just that little bit of glitch, so I can just trigger that whenever I feel like it. And we'll put that just over here somewhere. And then J, I don't want to loop that because it seems like something I would only want to play once here and there. So that's a master bounce. Again, I'd only want to play it once, so I'll join it, but I won't loop it. I'll take that, just so I can play it on its own as a reverbed melody instead of a dry melody if I want. Take that, it's a bunch of nice clicks and pops that we could probably use. Loop it. Move it over here. <clears throat> so all this stuff here is another master bounce. I think it's about four bars, five, four, no, about eight, eight bars worth of stuff. Wait, one, two, three, sixteen bars worth of stuff. All right, so I'll join that, loop it, move it over here because I want to play that with the half squad later. More nice clicks and pops. I'll take that as well. And that's a master bounce of some dubstep. <clears throat> Actually, I think we might need to play that with something else. Yeah, I think so. I think that belongs before it. Screw it. I'll just take the master bounce, join that. Loop it. Cool. So now we have a bunch of stuff. Um, I won't deal with this for now. It's just a bunch of electro stuff. And just to give you the idea, I'll just do all this stuff first. So now we've got all this stuff. We just need to go and name it now. So I'll call this Trigger Kick. I'll call this one um, Verb Kick for a Reverb. I'll call this Base One. I'll call this Sign base, I'll call this dubstep base. This is just so we can identify what stuff is while we're playing. Um, I won't name any of the percussion loops, that's not really important. But what I will do later is give them a color code so I know that there's something I need to do with them. We'll just call this intro, we'll also call the one beneath it intro. What's this? I'll just call this um, Melody Effects 1. I'll call this Melody Effects 2. Uh, 
I'll just call this one little glitch and I'll just call it to zoom into rename on glitch one call this one master one I'll call this one dubstep master call this orchestral Um, more orchestral stuff. I'll call this walk to Lapsy Chord. Wait, this is the dubstep master. What's this then? Wait, it's not dubstep master, that's just master break. Just walk effects. Click slash pop. Click slash pop to stop step master. Now I'll call this port melody for portamento. Call this one beep. I'll call this melody one. Cool, so now everything's named. What I'll go and do now is arrange it in session view to uh, a way where I can understand it. So we've got all this now, and it's not very tidy. It's going to be kind of hard to deal with. So what I'll do is arrange it. So we've got all these percussion loops. I'll make those green, and that way I know that they're just um, little pieces of clips that I need to re-trigger all the time. Uh, with these two intro ones, I'll make them the same color, blue, so I know to trigger them at the same time. Uh, I'll do the same with a few other things as well. Trigger kick, uh, I'll just leave anything white that just has to kind of be triggered, actually. No, I'll make triggered stuff purple, actually. I'll make it an off-color gray. Um, all the base. I'll just make that an off-colored green. <clears throat> melody and Melody Effects 1, they can be the same color as well, so I know to trigger them at the same time. Melody Effects 2 and Portamento Melody, I believe, need to be triggered at the same time as well, so I'll make them the same color. Uh, beeps, that's just another trigger thing, so I'll make it gray. Glitch 1 again, that's another trigger thing, so I'll make that Gray also. <clears throat> Master one, I'll make this red <clears throat> because that has to be played on its own. If it gets played with anything else, I'm doubling up the whole mix and that can get a bit loud and I don't really want to do that. So orchestral one and orchestral effects, I'll make them the same color so that I know to trigger them at the same time. Whoops, just went over my Oops. let's put them there. Uh, orchestral 2, I'll just leave that white. Harpsichord. <clears throat> Master break, that needs to be red because it goes on its own. And dubstep Master also has to go on its own. So there you go, that's a quick way of how I get my stuff into live view. And now I have um, uh, a bunch of control over what to do. Uh, I usually put it on 8th note grid so I can have the triggering options with these percussion go pretty crazy. So now you can do shit like that with your percussion. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'll chuck up the stems in this pack for you guys to slice it up in your own way. And um, yeah, have fun with it. And yeah, um, I hope you got something out of this. If you have any questions about it, just send me an email through my website, www.mrbillstunes.com. And yeah, cheers. Take it easy.